listening to the Art of Homeschooling podcast, where we help parents cultivate creativity and connection at home. I'm your host, Jean Miller, and here on this podcast, you'll find stories and inspiration to bring you the confidence you need to make homeschooling work for your family. Let's begin. Well, hey there, I'm Jean, and I'm an overcomplicator. Are you an overcomplicator too? Welcome to the club. Seriously, I think we all do this sometimes. So what are some of the ways that we overcomplicate our lives, our homeschooling? Here are just a few that I can think of. We got, We keep gathering more and more opinions rather than forming our own. We think, but I don't know how. We learn more and more and then discover that they are contradictions. We even sometimes choose confusion over clarity. That was me. Seriously, as, as a young parent and then as a new homeschooling mom, I so often felt unsure of myself. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. And why wouldn't somebody just tell me what to do, right? And I wondered why didn't anyone say that this was going to be hard or confusing or even painful? But Here's the biggest lesson I learned both in parenting and homeschooling. Clarity comes from taking action. Let that sink in for just a minute. Clarity comes from taking action. So wherever you are on your homeschooling journey, in your homeschooling year, and whatever is on the horizon for you coming next, This episode can help you move forward with confidence and ease. I have three tips for you uh, for how to be more decisive and five simple steps for how to take decisive action. Because remember, clarity comes from taking action. And in order to do that, we have to decide what to do. We can't really think our way through challenges or uh, our, out of our problems. We can't think our way out of the situation. We can't think our way into perfection or even into uh, making things work out the way we want them to. <laughs> At some point, we just simply have to roll up our sleeves and just do it. We have to try that lesson. We have to be willing for it to flop, even just flop completely. Because when things don't go well or don't go as planned, that's just as much of a learning experience as when everything goes swimmingly. And the homeschool lessons are just as much of a learning experience for us as the teacher as they are for our kids. We can only find out what works by trying some things. And guess what? You're also modeling then for your kids that it's okay to try things without knowing how it will all turn out that we learn from just seeing what happens, from observing the outcome and making adjustments from there. So remember to celebrate your successes as well as your efforts, right? Your efforts to just take the action needed. Celebrate your willingness to try. Some things will work out, they'll work well for a while, and then just fall away. And that's okay, too. That's just how it is. But in order to keep that forward momentum going, we need to stop overcomplicating and simply choose the next step. So here are three tips for how to be more decisive. Number one, 
stop deceiving yourself into thinking that there's one best or right way, like a best story or verse or block topic even, or drawing or painting or a way to do this. There are just so many different ways to do this homeschooling thing and to bring hands-on engaging learning. We're looking often for someone to tell us what is the best way to do this and the right way to do this or exactly how to do this, but that is just keeping us stuck. We have to dive in. So number two, don't second guess yourself. Once you've made a decision, keep moving forward to find out, to discover the learning in it, right? Um, to, To take action so that you can find out what the outcome will be. And number three, look forward, not back. We want to look back briefly, right? We want to look back briefly with the intention of how having that influence, how we move forward. So look back briefly, observe the present, and then plan for the next block or day or lesson. That's how you can gradually but incrementally improve and gain that forward momentum that we all need in order to feel inspired to even continue to keep homeschooling sustainable. This is in part, of course, a personality thing, right? So some of us feel this sense of heaviness about decision-making, like Like I said, like we don't know enough or it feels like too big of a responsibility some days. Others of us want to continually change our minds, thinking there must be something better. We just don't know what it is yet. Some of us just decide and then regret our choice. So we go back to making a new decision, like starting all over again. And others of us just drag our feet and keep saying, I don't know what to do next, or I don't know how. For me, my own personal experience early on uh, was that I kept changing my mind. Every time there was a challenge or even pushback from my kids, I'd start questioning my decisions. And I think that uh, I was doing this homeschooling thing wrong, that because it it uh, it didn't go beautifully, there I must be the the challenge, right? That what I chose or decided must have been inaccurate. And I would question my decisions over and over and over again. I'd think I was doing it wrong, so I'd do more research, I'd buy another curriculum, I'd stall. Even some days do nothing because I didn't know what to do. But here's what I learned through the years. There are hundreds of ways to homeschool. And all of these options are great until they get in your way of moving forward. So I just want you to remember that you will find your own way. And here's what that looks like. We want to commit, implement, observe, tweak, and move forward. And that very first step of the making a commitment requires us to make a decision, to make a choice. And the longer it takes, like the more indecisive we are, the harder it is to build any sort of momentum. So how do you do that when you are brand new to homeschooling or when your child reaches a new developmental stage because it seems to be changing, right, all the time, their needs, their interests, and all of that? My suggestion is that you find someone further down the road on the homeschooling path than you and you find out why and how they did things the way that they did. Then get in touch with your intuition about your particular child or children or family, and then simply decide. 
it's okay to rely on people you see as experts. Um, it's okay to learn more, right? But don't let that slow you down. Give yourself a time frame, perhaps, and then simply go all in. Because this momentum is really critical. The momentum is critical to us uh, building a sense of confidence and a sense that uh, their progress is being made. Uh, often many of us in the homeschooling world, we piece together our own plans, right? By seeing what this curriculum recommends, what that one does, and then we look at another one, and then we make a plan. But when things don't go perfectly, as I described in my own life, we, we begin to question everything. And then we think we have to start all over again, just like I did early on. I want you to know, first of all, you're not alone, right? This is a, a, a challenge, probably a challenge, not just for homeschoolers, but teachers everywhere. And it, it tends to happen more often when we're new or when there's been some change in our situation. So you're not alone. That's the first thing. Secondly, you can get past this, right? By gaining confidence in yourself, by recognizing what your tendencies are in terms of decision-making in particular, and then stepping out of that old pattern so that you don't stay spinning in that place of considering all the options all the time. Sometimes we have to just step off the hamster wheel and choose, right? So wherever you are in this journey or whichever type of decision maker you are, you can practice making decisions with more confidence and ease. Um, speed, commitment, and forward momentum will get you to your goals so much faster and will help you accomplish more and gain that confidence that we all crave so much. Just decide. <laughs> Remember, you can always change your decision, but beware that you don't change it too often because then that dilutes the impact of your decision and gets you back on the hamster wheel of considering all the options all the time. We do not want to stay there for very long. Indecision can keep you stuck, right? This can negatively impact your homeschool in a really big way and truly overcomplicate things unnecessarily. So as a reminder, here are the five steps to being more decisive in your homeschool and in your life. Commit, implement, observe, tweak, and move forward. So today, I want to invite you to practice being more decisive. This can make a really big impact on your homeschool, making it more fun, more interesting, and yes, more successful. Here are some simple truths to remember. We all have good days and bad days. We have clean sinks, dirty sinks, cooperative children, saucy children, we all wonder sometimes, why did we choose this over that? And we think it would be so much easier if we did it a different way, right? Sometimes we even think, what's wrong with me? You're not alone here. <laughs> we also all have a tendency to want it all right now. We want it all to work well. We want it all figured out. We want all the curriculum and the resources. <laughs> and we don't need it all. We just need one little piece and a decision. For me, indecision was often a sign that I had forgotten <laughs> that I felt called to spend my days with my children and to homeschool. I had forgotten that an arts-infused, hands-on, holistic curriculum speaks to me because it's healing for all of us. And I've seen it effects. I've seen the success of holistic hands-on learning. And when indecision would strike, that would get pushed aside. 
even after years of homeschooling, I could still get stuck. I could get stuck in comparison mode and indecision and overcomplicating things. So let me just remind you that so much of the comparison, the unrest, the judgment and lack of confidence is really just taking place inside of our own heads. <laughs> we all tend to com- overcomplicate our lives sometimes, right? And we all feel overwhelmed sometimes. But above all, I want to remind you to not let the overwhelm get the better of you and keep you from taking action. Clarity is not a destination. It's something that we want to live by, right? We want to experience that sense of clarity. So remember that clarity comes from taking action over and over again. And if we want the chatter to stop, we need to be bold, right? We need to be bold and decisive and commit to the choices we've made. We need to choose again this homeschooling life we're living and embrace it in a big way, deeply. And then we need to just get on with it. I'll leave you with this wonderful quote from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, and he said, Whatever you can do or dream, you can begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. If you like this idea of considering your options and then empowering yourself to be more decisive, more confident, and move forward, this is the way that I teach and coach homeschooling parents. I want you to feel like you can do this because, of course, you can. And I want you to feel more joy and ease along the way. I don't sell a particular curriculum. Instead, I help homeschoolers, I help you discover your gifts as a homeschooling mom and then help you create a homeschool that you love. So if you want to check out all that I offer, you can go to artofhomeschooling.com slash work with me. And thanks so much for joining me today for this episode all about how to be more decisive. You can find the show notes at artofhomeschooling.com slash episode 31. That's all for today, my friend. But here's what I want you to remember. Rather than perfection, let's focus on connection. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Art of Homeschooling podcast. Mm -hmm.